Good morning, grade 12s. Today we are back at Delphi Code, manipulating our database with um, the use of our ADO table component, etc. etc. So we are leaving SQL statements behind. And the reason why I've first done SQL and going back is because you have to be very careful if in, in an exam they've asked you to use SQL code, you will lose marks or you will not receive any marks if you use, you know, Delphi code. If you, if the question requires Delphi code and you're using SQL statements, you also won't receive any marks. So you have to be able to um, shift your minds back to um, what you've known before. The, I'll really, really quickly take you through this just as an example because actually you know everything that you um, need. It's just a little bit of thought process that you have to familiarize yourself when it comes to deleting records. It is very simple if you have to delete something that is in one table, no link between multiple table, tables. And you can either, there's two methods that you can use and the activity six that um, I ask you to do first actually asks you to look at two examples, deleting using filters or deleting um, without filters. If you filter a table and you can simply um, loop through the ta table, the filter table and delete everything because it is filtered and the deletion will only affect the filtered records in the table. If you do not have a filter, you would have a simple if statement. If according to the what you would have set the filter, let's say the school name, if it's Astra, as it is indicated here, um, you could, for example, say if um, PBL, whatever the table name is of this um, school name or school equals Astra, then delete next record. And if it's not, it will not delete it. And if it is, we delete. Now, you don't have to actually go to the next record if it's deleted. You will just say, if school equals Astra, um, delete, else next record. Um, because if you delete a record, it deletes it. So it automatically goes to the next record. And that's that's it for activity six. Now, the, the more complicated thing comes in if you have a database with linked tables. So here we have our happy snappy um, database again, and the print table has, you know, records of um, the specific prints of a specific order. So if I select a order um, in the order table, the print table has all the different prints for that specific order. So um, I can filter my print table according to the order number of the order table. That's how they are linked. And then we can um, delete, apply the code that we've done here, either with using filters and we have actually used the filter now because we filtered it according to the order number. However, in our example, they are first asking the question, let me quickly find this, whether the um, order has been processed or not. In the order table, there is a pro um, process or is developed, and it's either true or false. So we can only delete prints that have not been developed yet. Otherwise, it wouldn't make any sense. So if, if they haven't been developed, we can delete it before they would be printed. If they have been developed, um, bad luck. They've already been printed. They've already been processed. So the, the code, let's quickly see. I don't want to jump or sound confusing. 
um, let's, oh there, we're good. Um, order has already been processed. So if people order form is developed, which means equals true, then we show a message that it cannot be deleted. And then we exit. Else we, you know, we give them a message. And it's always a good um, principle to warn a user before you delete anything. So you must familiarize yourself again with the message dialog. It's in your green book in Appendix B, I think, um, somewhere there. Or you can simply study this one. Okay, so we have uh, a, a message that we give, um, and then we have the the kind of warning or you know the message text or message type. Um, that could be information. That could be, um, I think, info, and so on. Um, and that, that depends on which icon is shown in the message dialog box. Then we have our message buttons, OK. And in this case, we have an OK button and a cancel button. And then the message response. So this one, if the response of the click actually corresponds with this button, OK, then we will set our... Um, cursor into the first um, record, and then we're going to loop through our table. We can simply delete it because it has been filtered already over here. So this is a, um, a procedure that when you click on the first record, and this is now clicking on this order form number, then it will filter um, according to the order form um, according to the order form number that you have selected. So it receives the order form number out of the order form table, filtered set to false, and now we have working with a print table, we, where we set the order form number to the order form number from the order table, um, order form table. Set it to true. We can count how many records there are, and we can display this now in our message. Um, there's 14 prints for this order number. Okay, so we simply ask, and this I number of prints um, is exactly this. So we would declare this one globally so that we can access it in our, on our delete button as well. And we warn them you really want to delete this and if, if they click OK, we can delete it and then um, that's it. And we can then delete that from the order form table. So it deletes the active record. So if you call on the delete method, it will delete the active record. And then this is our procedure again that is called to display the next or the, the, the one that's in the first um, in the first column. So it clicks on it and it filters the um, print table according to the next order form number of the order form table. All right, that's a mouthful, but um, I hope that you are following me. And then if the response was cancel, um, we have an else and we say, okay, no orders will be deleted and we exit. And that's it. So then we have activity seven, um, where you have to write a program um, based on the Edward shop um, to delete the supplier from the supplier table and all items supplied by the supplier from the item table. Remember to make a backup of the database, otherwise you're going to lose it. All right, so activity six first and then activity seven. Um, shouldn't be too difficult. Um, it is exactly the same. You can follow the example that we've given here from the Happy Snappy and just change the applicable um, fields and um, columns, etc. Um, just we are not going to cover this, um, you know, using cascadingly. You can, for your pet, 
you are more than welcome to use this. So what cascading delete means is in access, you can, when, when you set up the relationship between two tables, you can actually, um, it has something to do with referential integrity, meaning that we cannot have, you know, um, prints in a print table, although you've deleted the, um, the order in the order form table. That would go against referential integrity principles. So there is an option that you can choose cascading delete, which automatically will delete all children of a specific parent. So you don't have to complete this code, um, you know, looping through the print table in order to delete. You can simply delete the, um, the order form or the order form number of the order form table, and it will automatically delete the all corresponding prints of the print table. So you can um, just look at this, um, how to do it, and then um, you are welcome to do activity eight, but I'm not requiring you to do that. And then tomorrow we will look at updating records. All right, guys, that's it. I'm not even going to ask you to subscribe or to like or anything <laughs> um, that was actually just for fun. But yeah, so guys, enjoy um, the activities and ask questions if you need any help.